All right, so um, we downloaded some pictures earlier. We've used one of them. Let's add a few more pictures. And now, because we've got the CSS rule that we can apply to all of those pictures, um, we, they, we can make them all uh, behave. So until I figure out that little, um, that little space there, I'm going to deactivate the code. I'm not going to delete it. I'm going to deactivate it by commenting it. So remember, we can write comments in our HTML to um, make notes and such. We can also write comments to deactivate code instead of deleting it. Now, comments in CSS are different than comments in HTML. And notice the example here, line one. Put your custom CSS here. That's a comment. And notice how that one works. You might be familiar with that in other languages. Slash asterisk starts the comment. And then asterisk slash, the opposite, ends the comment. So anything within those two markers is going to be a comment in CSS. That doesn't make any sense in HTML. So I'm going to comment out the box shadow for the moment. Probably bring it back later. Slash asterisk. Everything following turns green. And I want to end the comment at the end of line 4. Asterisk slash. So now box shadow is deactivated. I might use the code again later, so I just take off that comment and it comes back. So there it is there. So I want to add uh, I want to add a few more pictures in other parts of the document. Uh, I want to add a picture in the about screen. Let's see what a good picture would be. Maybe the one of students, this group of students here. Students JPEG. So I want to use that picture in the About screen. Uh, and I'm going to use the sort of the placeholder that I've got for this picture there, uh, including the div. That's how this whole thing works. That we've got a div as the container, which has wide image, and then a picture inside. So back on line 53 to 55, I'm going to copy that. And that's what I'm going to paste into that little pop-up about screen. So select that, copy. And about uh, should be somewhere at the very bottom. There we go, about screen. I'm going to add this before my paragraph. So line 226, paste there. And instead of the image graduates, we can try students. I can leave the rest the same because it's going to have this, we're going to use it, we're going to reuse the same class, um, part of uh, the div, wide image and we're able to do that. Um, anything that is a class that has the dot can be reused multiple times throughout the project. Anything that is an ID with a pound symbol, in contrast, can only be used once per project. And it'll make more sense as we actually use it. But I'm going to save, maybe save all, and check the results. the picture. If I had a, a larger sized uh, device, I might see that much. So uh, because both of those pictures have the wide image, 
class, uh, anything that I do here will be applied to the other pictures as well. So if I add a border dash radius, remember that one to give me rounded corners, border dash radius 25. Now I've got some rounded corners for this element and then over on the about screen as well. So I write it once and it gets applied multiple places. It's optional, but I wrote border dash radius. You mean from width a hundred percent to a hundred and ten? No, no. So if you just take what you've done. And, and run it, and then widen your screen wider than the picture to get square corners on the right. No, it's because your div is wider than the image. Yeah, if you go that far out, my div is 100%, so it'll go as far as the edge of the screen. But my picture is smaller, so it doesn't touch the edge, so oh. it doesn't get. But if you apply the border radius to the image inside the div and not to the edge of the um, div, you would be better off. Yeah, so we've got roundness to the actual div itself. Remember, we can apply roundness to the image as well. We can apply that border radius to many elements. Yeah, the dialog box is limited in that it never gets as, as wide as your whole screen. Where at? The bottom of the yeah. still yeah, that's happening. And I remember there was a student that said, "All you do is write this," and it did apply to the, it did apply to this wide image. And uh, I I know I have that saved on my code at home, so that's where I'll look. Um, but I know there's a way that to to make that work because it was bugging me too. And there's many ways to fix this stuff. But I remember he said, "Oh yeah, I figured it out this way." And there's one more line here, but I don't remember what it is. Once I I find that out again, I'll tell you guys. And then we won't have this little cutoff annoyance at the bottom. Right, so um, so we've got a few pictures on these different screens. These two pictures are, are obeying that CSS there. I'm going to put another picture, um, but this time inside of one of these, um, inside of one of these little collapsible things but I'm not going to set it to the wide image class. Maybe we'll control it in a different way. Uh, so we'll put an image in the in the art 101 collapsible element. Um, I'm going to copy again this this div this div and image pair but then we'll remove class of wide image so I'm going to bring in the picture and then the the picture and then that div and then I need to find where that art 101 section is uh, I can do a search because I use I can search for the term Smith or Instructor Smith. There's only one place in the whole project that has that, so that might help me find that a lot easier. And here it is, line 108. So I'm going to add, I'm going to copy and paste that div and that image above the text. 
that says a basic drawing class, uh, <coughs> which is line 107. So put that in there and remove that class. Yeah, let's do a different one. Um, I want to do two students. Let's say in this case, uh, okay, so I put two students, I save it and I run it, and what happens is, okay, I, I open up the Art 101, there's the picture. Mm, too big. So uh, here's the um, here's the here's the example where we could do the uh, simply have uh, width to be a hundred percent by itself, so that it actually shrinks the picture to the size of the element. This picture is not the best for that because uh, this collapsible element, the proportions of it, I think, don't quite fit for the picture. But we'll work with what we have just to show you alternatives. Uh, but we're gonna say, okay, we've got two students. Um, let's say our class this time is a uh, square image. So these, these are names I'm making up on the spot. These don't exist. That's what I can do with classes and IDs. I'm inventing my own bit of code here, and then I'm defining what that means in the CSS file. So I'm inventing something called square image. Uh, and then on the CSS, I'm going to write a dot square image and then define some properties for it. So anywhere I use square image in my project, it will follow these rules. And because it's a class, I can do that. I can reuse it. So in the CSS, I will create square image. <coughs> Same as before, a couple of curly braces. Do with 100% as a starting point. <coughs> so if I put more pictures in this collapsible element and I reuse this, I will all obey that that rule, that CSS rule. Good. Enough. I should get. I should follow my own advice and, and do save all. So there must be something else here that. Did I spell that right? What's that? You're basically saying though that your div is like with 100%. But you're not saying anything about the uh, image to restrict it within that. True. Okay. Um, so again, this is doing exactly what we're telling it. The box itself make it 100% wide. And we didn't really specify the picture, why not on the previous one, reasons. So if we s put a space and then IMG, notice it becomes blue. Uh, here we're saying wherever we see an image, wherever we see an image inside of a div called squared image, make it 100%. So technically we're targeting the image inside the div, not the div itself. And so what we've got then is the image gets 100% wide. So 
So CSS can be pretty complex uh, because we can uh, work with things inside of other things, elements inside of other elements, mix code. It's a little complicated, but in my case, now the picture is 100% of its container, which is this uh, collapsible element. Yeah, I think so. So we should have been targeting the image all along instead of making a div. Question. What's the difference between this change you just did adding the IMG versus the overflow hidden? Uh, on what does what this does is it shrunk the whole image to be visible at all times, whereas the overflow didn't shrink the image; it cropped the image. Notice I only see that much of the image, and then when I expand my size, notice so the this girl that's looking at us, if I expand the size, I see a little bit more around her. So the overflow of hidden crops, and then the hundred percent shrinks it down. Yes. So you when you said earlier to um, specify just the image, would you, would you put the class back on the image line? Yeah, and we could do that too. You just to get rid of the div completely. Yeah, we could get rid of the div. It doesn't really seem to be helping us much in this case. And then we would add that uh, square image as a class right there. Okay. Save a couple of bytes. And then we would not need this particular image because then we're targeting the image directly. Yeah. So then the, the, the width 100% that would go in the style quote? Say that again? If, if you were going to do away with the, with the, the square diff? image class, then you would put width 100% no, well, we're not talking about getting rid of the square image code completely. We're talking about getting rid of it as, as it's linked to the, the div. Right, but if you, did, if, you, if you did away with the div and just had the image statement, you, you would put the width 100% in, in the style? Well, we would, be getting rid of, we would be getting rid of it here in HTML, but we would not get rid of it in CSS. Because if we only left image, that would apply to every image in the whole project. That's overkill. Every image would be affected that way. I think he's asking that if you uh, uh, remove square image from the div, uh, and uh, that oh, he's suggesting that putting it as an inline style, uh, which is not what you're trying to do. Is that it? Are you saying putting the 100% width in the style here? Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. That, and then you would, then you would need the, the square image. Wow. Yeah, but the problem with that is again, it'll only apply to that yeah, picture. Microphone. If I put, if I put two more pictures in the art one hundred two and the art one hundred three, yeah. I'd have to put style in each of them. And then when I decide that actually I want it seventy five percent wide, I'm going to need to go in and change all three of those. So this is why we would want to use CSS because everywhere we connect the CSS rule to some element, they'll all obey when you change this original CSS. Can I delete the image selector on that class with take it I think the way that I would do it is I would remove image there so that it's a little more generic and then apply it to the class here and then remove the whole div completely. Or since the div does nothing, just make it empty. Give it a class. I thought the reason we put the div in the first one was to turn of the overflow. Mm -hmm. Is that right? That's exactly why, because we're saying um, anything that exists outside of the box, cr crop it out. So these, since it's a, the collapsible already has a container with specified, or however they put it in the background, so that we didn't need to do the overflow? Well, I wanted a different effect. Okay. I want to show the, the picture that it fits in the collapsible, whereas the other one that have overflow hidden, I want the little trick about show me more of the picture with a wider sized device. Here I want to see the complete the picture completely. 
Well, is the unit thing that you just did with that image, the square? If, if you do to the top, the white image, make a new one with the white image image, then you can put your box shadow on the top one. Make a new um, one. If you make it a new one. A new one that is white image or a new one that says image? No, a new one that says underneath that one, that says white image, space image. With image? And then you can put your box shadow back in. Huh. And apply the shadow to just the image, not the door. Like that. Um, that sort of fixes the issue about the drop shadow. It looks like it, but it's still acting weird regarding the roundness. See how, like, the bottom roundness is a little abrupt. Vertical align top to which one? Maybe, but it removed my box shadow. Well, it did fix the round corner. <laughs> I guess that did it, but can we put this back on just the wide image? Nope. Well, as we're seeing here, there's many ways to skin the digital cat. <laughs> <laughs> and many of them are, are pretty good solutions. Um, this way here is a solution. But like I said, I'm going to look at my code because I swear that there was one line of code here, some esoteric thing that will fix it all in one line of code. And it's just a few little extra bytes, sure, but when this happens over and over in a variety of places, every byte helps. But uh, I'm going to put this code at the end of the day in the, in the, in the Z drive. But um, this seems to solve it for the moment. Thank you, everyone, for your opinions. And... Uh, your insights that seems to be fixing that issue and how does it look over here looks good too so that's a solution and then the difference is that in this screen here we're making the picture uh, fit completely into the into its container which is the collapsible element and what I did was, it, it was a. Uh, we still have the div in here, but we just removed the class from the div and we added the square image 100% to the class of the picture itself. So if, if I still copied this whole chunk and put in another picture under the other Art 102, for example, it would also work the same. In your in your CSS file, mm -hmm. you have you have two classes with the same name. You mean wide image yeah, image wide and image. wide image? Technically, mess, mess things up? I mean, okay. technically not because we are um, specifying here. If we read it from right to left, 
this image, which is inside of this div, this is what we do to it. And this one, we're just simply saying this, um, this div, this is what we do with it. So we are being more specific, and we're technically calling two different things. The short answer is, trust me. <laughs> because we can, we can uh, think of the Russian nesting dolls again. We've got the smallest one inside of a larger one, right? So we are specifying, let's control the smallest nesting doll by specifically referring to it. And that's how we're sort of doing here, from right to left. Here's the smallest nesting doll. Here's the largest one. This is the div that's covering and closing the smaller one inside. That's why that works. Whereas up here, we're saying anything that has anything that has this, this nesting doll, this large one at the top, affected like this. But if there's also an image inside of that nesting doll, control it like that. Is, is there a reason why you would call the second one wide image and why you wouldn't just give it a different class name all together? Yes, because then we'd have to give the image itself a class, a different class. Basically, we're saying all images is image wide image class. The reason we use IMG is because notice we have a tag here, IMG. We're saying if we were to write some code that said uh, IMG 200%, every single image in the whole project would be 200%. So now we're saying any image that's also in this div, in this class, let's do this. That's why it's also a different color. Notice it doesn't have a dot. It's not a class. It's saying any anywhere we use the IMG tag, right there, and it's inside of something called white image, then we'll do this to it. Question? Line height zero. That seems to do it. So what we did here was we canceled out any line heights. Therefore, we don't need a specific. It's better to write as generic possible code uh, so that it applies to the most elements as necessary. Whereas here, this solved an issue. But if I remove that and instead add this line height right here, thank you for that, we've we fixed the issue that was plaguing us, and we've saved a few bytes. And if this happens many times, we save even more bytes, kilobytes. And um, we also possibly then end up having to deal with less code, errors in code. So it seems that if we add line line dash height zero, we're saying any line heights that there might be, because there's always some default sizes. We've said take out the line height, which is the space between lines. Like right here, there's a space between this line and this line and this line. We've said put no space between the lines. And it doesn't make sense because it's a picture, it's not text, but sometimes CSS is like that. So here we've canceled out the inherent amount of line height. And that seems to have removed that little, that little bit of uh, space that was bothering us. And we've done it in the one place. Less code to work with. So that means we don't need it over here. We don't need... Oh, no, never mind. Uh, but we don't need that extra... We don't need that extra selector, that extra bit of CSS code. That's the updated code at that point. Since we're applying it to a div, the line height would be relevant for lines that it might think that are going to be in the div, even though what's contained in the div is only an image. Mm. Uh, that's the reason that putting an extra space. Mm. Yeah. It assumes that there's going to be a line height, so then we cancel it out, even if it's an image.
All right, so uh, I think we'll uh, wrap it up at this point. Uh, we've got some, um, some visual elements to our design. We spent most of the day setting up the other screen folds, the other design elements, and we'll add more content as time goes on. But we've got these other, these other screens. We have the little pop-up happening, etc. Started to play with some CSS. We'll see that it might not be as straightforward as we would like sometimes. It's a good idea then to see if um, if there's different solutions for the same issue. I'm going to put this code in the network folder in just a moment, and then I'll upload the videos. Any general questions?